So I see some blue, maybe some pink. Maybe if we zoom all the way in there, can we see somebody doing jumping jacks? All right, so this is an addendum to another video that I made that looked at the body pose model in ML5.js for key point estimation. But the only thing I focused on in that video were the 2D key points. How do you find the X, Y position of various points on the body using MoveNet and another model called Blaze Pose? Well, the Blaze Pose model, it turns out, also can estimate a Z position and what that Z value is and how you can work with it, that's what I want to investigate right now. I'm going to start with the code exactly as I left it in the previous video. I have a variable to hold on to the body pose model that I'm loading in preload. I also have a variable for the video, which in this case is coming from the webcam right here. I call detect start to begin the process of feeding the frames from the video into the move net model. Whenever it receives results, those results are stored in a global variable called poses. And then in the draw loop, I'm drawing pink dots for all of the key points, as long as the confidence threshold is greater than 0.1, and blue lines to connect the key points according to the body pose model skeleton connections. I've also buried at the bottom a mouse pressed function just to console log the results from the model in case I need to examine them. And we can see there's a key points array with 17 points and named parts, each with their own X, Y, and confidence score. Notice that the parts only have an X and Y. The key points only have an X and a Y. I'm here to look at what happens when I change from the MoveNet model to Blaze Pose. The first thing you'll notice is there seem to be more points. We can see that reflected here. There are 33 key points. Let's dig into some of these properties. Key points is exactly what it was before. There's an XY, a name for each body part, as well as a confidence score. If I go to key points 3D, you'll see, aha, suddenly there is an X, Y, and Z. Now those numbers look very different than the numbers that we saw under the 2D points. These are pixel values. What are these values? They are, in fact, real world measurements. Those are measurements in meters. The Blaze Pose model takes all of the key points of the body and places them within a two by two by two meter box. Now, one thing you have to realize is that this X, Y, Z value is not some kind of distance from the camera. It's actually a relative position to the center of the body. And in fact, Blaze Pose considers the center of the body as the hips. This will be easier, I think, to dissect and unpack when I have the example running, so I'll return back to it. But I just wanted to give you a taste of what the values look like. I also want to point out that under each named property, there are both the XY pixel values as well as a separate key point 3D property that has the XYZ values. Notice how the estimated 2D position and the 3D position each have their own confidence value. They're probably going to be similar, I would guess, but maybe for certain images, the model is more confident about its 2D position estimation versus the 3D one. Now, if you watched my previous video, I had this very awkward setup where in order to get the full body uh, viewable by the camera, I got a second camera, I put it over here, I wandered in the corner, I got on a step stool. It was kind of a bit of a mess. So I'd like to try something different. And in fact, this could be helpful to you. Certainly it's good while you're coding to get up and move around and stretch. But if I'm trying to debug how this model works, make changes, creatively explore the possibilities of visualizing the key points that are estimated, it could be really helpful if I just had a recorded video playing in a loop. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And in fact, I've already done that and I uploaded two video files to the web editor here, Dan Jumping Jack and Dan 3D Test. So to start, let's just replace the live camera feed from one of those video files. I'm going to leave the variable name as video. I'm going to change from create capture to create video. Then I'm going to add the file name of the video as a string. Then with a video file, I need to call dot play. And there we go. But I'm going to change it to loop so that it's looping over and over again. 
Other thing I'm gonna do with this example is not draw the video in the canvas itself. This is because I'm going to set up the canvas ultimately as a WebGL 3D scene where I can rotate around the key points that I'm rendering, that body's skeleton. So let's take out video.hide. The video is actually uh, 640 by 360, so I can change the canvas size. And then I'm gonna take out drawing the video and just put in a black background. Let me change the size of the dots so that I can see them better where they're clustered so close to each other. Okay, there we go. Now, there's all sorts of things I could try to do. I could leave the drawing in 2D, but maybe use the Z value to affect the color or the size of one of the dots, but I'm gonna try to actually render this in a 3D scene using the P5 WebGL renderer. To do that, I just add one more argument to create canvas. Immediately, you'll notice that the body is now in the wrong place. This is because in WebGL, the origin of the canvas is the center, not the top left. This is actually a good thing for what I wanna do because I'm gonna use the X, Y, Z values, which if you remember, are relative to the center of the body, which is zero, zero. All I need to do is swap out the key points array for the key points 3D array in my code. You can do that right here. Okay, we're getting somewhere. I see a dot in the center, but the lines are still off to the right and below. Let's use the 3D array for the lines as well. And then instead of drawing the line with the line function, I'm gonna use begin shape, end shape, and vertices, which I think will make things a little bit uh, easier to work with. If you've never worked with begin shape and end shape before, I'll refer you to my video about custom shapes in P5.js. So I see some blue, maybe some pink. Maybe if we zoom all the way in there, can we see somebody doing jumping jacks? Look at those values. Remember, those values are in real world units, meters. They're not pixel units. So in order for me to see them on a canvas that's 640 by 360, I need to expand the range. One option would be to scale the values just by multiplying them by some number. For example, I could say key point X times 100, Y times 100. Oh, and I never put the Z in here, so let's put that as well. And there we go. There's the little jumping jack man. <laughs> Probably would make sense for me to put that number 100 in a variable and always be multiplying everything by it, but there's another way. I could actually use the scale function, which would in effect scale the range of the canvas itself. So right at the beginning of draw, I could just say scale 100. Let's scale things up a bit more. If the range of the values from blaze pose is between negative one and one, and I want the top to be negative one and the bottom to be one, I could scale by uh, the height of the canvas divided by two. Now the dots don't seem to be visible anymore. Maybe they're just too small. We make a stroke weight of 16. Oh, and interestingly enough, they're kind of behind the lines. This has to do with the way things are being rendered are no longer a 2D canvas of layers, but a 3D scene where there is depth sorting based on where the different shapes are. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, as I continue working on this, maybe we can investigate different visual ways of rendering. But immediately, don't you notice something? The hips are locked into place. So while I'm actually in the video jumping up and down, and when we used MoveNet and the 2D key points, we saw that motion go along with it. Now everything is moving just only relative to those hips. Let's see if we can make this look a little bit more like a 3D scene by adding a floor. So I'm gonna draw a square at zero, zero. That is uh, width divided by two. And I'm gonna say rect mode center and give it a transparent fill. Where is it? Oh, oh, I'm losing my mind here. I forgot about the scale. I'm like, why is it so big? Well, it's scaled as well. So I want that to maybe just be one meter wide in terms of the units that I'm working with. There we go. Then I want to rotate it along the X axis so that it's flat 90 degrees. Then I wanna move it down to where my feet are presumably. So let me translate down a meter. I'll make it two meters wide 
Not the most amazing 3D scene work, but I wanted to put something there just so you could see. Let's now spin the scene around on the Y axis. So I'm gonna do that at the beginning of draw, right after I scale. Rotate Y by some angle. I'm gonna make that angle a global variable equal to zero, and then I will increase that angle a little bit every frame. Whoa, that's pretty spinning too fast. Aha, now we can really see those points are living in a three-dimensional space. It's most pronounced by the feet, uh, where the toe and the ankle are obviously at a, a different place along the z-axis. But luckily, or unluckily for you, I'm not sure which one, I recorded another video where I tried to move a lot more towards the camera. That one is called Dan 3D Test. So I'll let you be the judge of how good a job the model is doing at accurately estimating the 3D positions of the relative parts of my body in these very awkward uh, poses. But you can see I'm getting real 3D data there by using scale, um, by drawing with the WebGL render in P5, I'm able to reconstruct the body skeleton in a virtual space. One thing that might be helpful here is not to actually do my own rotation around the Y axis, but to instead call a special function in P5 called orbit control. And what orbit control allows you to do is click and drag the mouse to change your view of the scene. So I can do this and I'm actually looking at it now from above. So I can pinch and zoom to kind of go in closer as well. You can see there's a lot of noise and jitteriness of the data, probably adding some smoothing uh, to the code with LERP could be something to try. I'll try to include that in the code examples that I provide with this video. Another thing that I should mention is I'm drawing the lines and the points at their 3D positions in space, but it often makes sense, uh, depending on how, what kinds of things you want to render, to actually translate to those positions and draw the shapes relative to that. So let me just show you what that would look like. In other words, instead of drawing the point at X, Y, Z, I would translate. And once I've translated, I can draw the point at zero, zero, zero. Of course, I don't see them anymore. That's because calls to translate are cumulative, and in order for each translation to be standalone, I need to use push and pop. This is also covered in my transformations video in P5.js. The reason why I'm doing this is maybe instead of drawing a point, I wanna draw a box, and drawing other kinds of 3D shapes require translate. So I could draw a box of size uh, 0.1 probably, and let me change the stroke weight to one, Maybe give it a little transparent fill. And now each of those boxes could potentially rotate. Let's rotate them along the, along the Z axis. Let's put the angle increasing back in. And you can see now all of those boxes are rotating. So I didn't really have a goal here uh, of something to make. I just wanted to show you that with the blaze pose model, there are, in addition to the X, Y key points, uh, X, Y, Z key points. I wanted to talk about what the uh, units of measurement are with them and how you work with them in WebGL. So I don't know, hopefully you can come up with some creative ideas of how you might want to render in 3D or use the key point Z estimation in some other creative way. Please share those things with me. You can do so on the Coding Train website. The page for this video with all the code examples is linked below and I'll see you next time on the Coding Train. Mm -hmm.